They're going to have to be there. There's a fork in the road in every situation, otherwise known as a choice. Yes or no, good or evil, I or seek. When it comes to living with alopecia, areata, totalis, or universalis, there's a fork in the road every single morning. Wig or bald? Do I hide it or do I live in the sea? But is it really that simple? Over the next 20 minutes, I'll take you on a journey through my life from early childhood, adolescence, and into adulthood, and share with you what I've learned so far. So, my name is Becky Hibbs. I've been living with alopecia since I was two years old. My ears have heard those famous words, you're beautiful just the way you are, for 21 years now, and I still barely believe it. But this past year, I've learned a lot about myself, and even more about society and their perception of all people. This year, I stopped wearing my hairpiece, and found something I was looking for along the way. Now it's usually best to start at the beginning, so I guess I'll start with early childhood and um, give you a few experiences from then. First I'll show you a slide um, where the clipper is. This is me and mom in 1988. <laughs> I was born, I had some hair when I was born. Me at two, I think. <laughs> These are the only two years of my life that I had my own hair. Brown and beautiful, but then alopecia happened. Being only two when I lost my hair, I didn't know what was going on. And of course, my mom freaked out right away and had to get me a wig. And um, there's this funny story, first I'll show you this, and I <coughs> warn you, it looks a little bit like Joe Dirt. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I guess we were in a line at McDonald's one day. And there were these ladies just ranting and raving over my beautiful, thick, long brown hair, and I'm not always been thinking Jews are battle, because I'm sure many of you do. And she didn't say anything, she just thanked them. And I no sooner did she thank them and I turned around and whipped it off and threw it on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and mom's just like, oh, thank you. <laughs> so that was kind of funny when I that. When I start, started kindergarten, I noticed, I started to notice my differences. I had this really ugly favorite hat that had these fake flowers, like blue hot glued all over it. <laughs> but um, I remember swinging on the swings uh, and holding my hat on because I was scared to fall off and the kids might see you or might make fun of me, as if they couldn't already tell, because you know, you can tell around the bottom that you don't have hair, but I was little, I didn't know. And I've had many of those playground experiences, and I'm sure most of you shared with me, <laughs> where you're hanging upside down on the parallel bars and your hair falls off and you just drop to the ground quickly because you're like, ah! hide it. But um, since then, uh, in third grade actually, I had an opportunity to be on a local news channel, channel 8, and my mom, being the smart woman she is, took this opportunity to um, make my classmates really aware of what was going on. And so she contacted NAF and got those coloring pamphlets and took the VHS video <coughs> into class and got all like, the third grade classes together and um, really just laid it down, straight, simple, so that the kids could understand how to Q&A for them, and um, then that very week I was able to get on this news channel. And um, so all the teachers got together and got all the third grade classes together, and they watched me on TV. And then the next day I go back to class, and they had a big piece of art paper, like, sprawled across the chalkboard, still taped up to it, with, um, all the kids' signatures on it, and like saying, you're a celebrity, you're so cool, like, and I still have this piece of paper, I should have brought it, and it for you guys. but it was so cool, and um, that was like my first, I was really young, it's third grade, but it was my first realization that knowledge is understanding, and when you understand something, you're not scared of it as much, and so it helps not to really make fun of others for it. All through elementary school, my mom prayed every single night that my hair would go back by the time I was 13, we kind of set like a deadline. And um, I held on to that prayer, but my hair didn't grow. And instead, God gave me a lot of low hair piece. <laughs> now this thing, like, I couldn't believe it. It stayed on my head, it was the vacuum fitted thing, and my first experience with that type of a hair piece. And it stayed on my head, and it was real hair, and I just felt so pretty. And um, my wig became my crutch throughout adolescence and into high school. I ended up getting like three more of these hair pieces from Lots of Love and I'm really grateful. 
And um, it became my safety blanket. It was, it made me feel beautiful, it made me feel like one of the girls. And even though all my classmates knew, um, it just, it was what I needed. And it got me through high school. I started attending more conferences around this time. Um, I was seven when I attended my first one here in D.C. But then around um, adolescence, I started going to a few more. And I developed a really great group of friends. And we. <laughs> We, um, sorry, I'm just thinking about it. <laughs> some, some of these girls just so inspired me because I was, I would not wear my hair here in this bubble, in this amazing world of alopecia land, <laughs> but I would wear it when I'm at home. And I just, oh, I started longing to be able to be okay with myself outside of here. So that was kind of one of my goals to get to, and I wish to be that brave, but I, um, would make the most of my like bravery right after these conferences. I'd go home and I'd have a strict bravery for like a couple days. I would go to the grocery store without my hair or I'd go to church without my hair. But I would put a sticker on the back of my head because that's kind of what we did the kids camp. We'd like paint our heads and put stickers on it. And so it kind of, when people would like talk about it, they would just draw their attention to the sticker and be like, you got a sticker on your head. <laughs> like, yeah, I do. And I don't know, just maybe, I don't know why. <laughs> It was just um, a way to distract myself from being bald. I was like, I got a Superman, but I was a kid. In high school, I was involved in all kinds of stuff. Um, cross country was kind of a really big step for me to not wear my hair in front of people. Um, I'd wear a bandana instead. It was that was my next safety blanket. And I was a really great runner. I ended up being like top runner at my school, and um, was like one of the athlete people there. And I um, also was in the ski club, and I was manager for the boys' baseball team, that was fun. And um, <laughs> I was in tons of music stuff, because I sing, ever since I was two, I'd sing in church. Um, Jesus loved to sing, was probably my mom's first song she taught me. But I um, was in band, of course, and played piano since kindergarten, and Churches were starting to ask me to sing there, and I was in talent contests around my area, even won first place at one, and um, then I was also a hunter, sorry if that person's any of you out, but I hunt in Pennsylvania, and I had a part-time job, and of course I had boyfriends. Now this is a question that I was, have been asked here at NAF, like, did you have any problems dating? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> just because I could be any girl, like, I could, I could be blonde, or I could be bald, or I could have short hair, or I don't know what it was, but I never had any problems, so don't worry about that. That's not important anyway, but I just wanted to tell you that. All these, all these things were confidence boosters and helped me, to help to define me as more than just the girl without hair. And looking back, I realized that despite the fact that I had an amazing group of kids that my mom helped me to make aware, you know, what was going on and they didn't care after that. Um, then uh, it, helped me, it helped that I didn't seclude myself from all of that. I still lived a completely normal life. And if I would have secluded myself, and whether I chose to wear my hair or not, that's not the point here, it's just um, I would have... Others would have acted weird around me. Like I said earlier, when you don't understand something, then you're scared of it. And so, I probably would have been made fun of, but I really wasn't. I had a great experience. Um, and if people would ask, I would tell them. I wanted them to ask. And sometimes if I was in situations where, um, you know, I was with some friends, but they had some new friends come and like, hang out with us, and I wasn't wearing my hair piece, they can move to my house, because that's usually the only time I wasn't wearing my hair. I, um, I would just be like, so just to start things off, I'm Becky, and I, you can see that I don't have hair clearly, so this is what it is, just so you know. And that's totally how that I'm like, just so you know. And you're like, alright. So, just be like, legitly real about it, because it helps, to be honest. I found that confidence was the key to living with alopecia as an adolescent. If you're confident, others don't question you. But just because I was confident didn't mean that I was okay with being bald. At least not then. Since the end of high school, I've had some incredible opportunities and made some pretty cool things happen in my life. I got connected to this wig maker actually through one of these conferences, and um, I had the opportunity to model some of his hair pieces in New York. 
And these were the blonde ones. I don't want to push the blonde, but I also tried on dark hair pieces and cur curly froze. I did some pictures of those, you can imagine. And um, I just, I was like, oh, this is awesome. I'm using this burden to like be a blessing. It's like I'm getting to do something and travel up to New York City and live my life and I'm getting attention. <laughs> and I just, I loved it. And I was like, I'm going to do more of this. And so, um, being a runner as well, I, my mom and I coordinated a tortoise and hare run the summer after I graduated high school. And that was a complete success and had a great time and everybody wanted me to do another one. So even though I went to college, I was like help, the calling back and forth to plan a second one for my freshman year of college. And we raised money for that and it was another way to make the most of my new ball and like making awareness. And I felt like I was helping. I felt like even though I technically wasn't looking for, like finding, researching for a cure, I felt like I was getting towards that. I was um, adding to it. Now a huge decision in my life also was to, um, <clears throat> oh, there's the and things. I had these little trophies made up of rabbits on them. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> I moved to Nashville, Tennessee. That was one of my big choices in life. I moved from Pennsylvania, a small town, like 2,500 people maybe. We have one red light, a grocery store, and now a subway. <laughs> and um, I moved out of there, I was like one of three students to move out of the state for college, and I stayed out of the state, and I'm still in Nashville, but I um, went to Belmont University, and I thought that this could be my opportunity to like start over. Nobody knows me, nobody cares. Um, so that summer before I went to college, I was here in D.C. for an app conference, and ended up going with some of my girlfriends, and I got this tattoo. Hi, Mom. It was my first one alone. <laughs> Still let your kids go alone though, to conferences. But, um, <laughs> um, I thought that this tattoo would be a good conversation piece starter. And um, so like walking around, running maybe, and someone's like, oh, I like a tattoo. Why are you bald? Like that's just a good intro, I felt like. But I ended up not using it. I just, I needed my security. It was in a whole new place, a whole new city, a whole new friends, um, all new boys. I just, I wanted to have my hair as my security. So I went all through college with my hair pieces. I would switch from blonde to red and graduated last year, 2011, from Belmont with a music business degree and um, realized that I was graduated and I needed to get a job. <laughs> So I was like, oh, man, I want to work in the music industry. I don't want to just choose anything. So I was applying to places. I was like, I need a buffer job. So I started working at this fabulous restaurant called Taco Mama Sita. If you're ever in Nashville, please come visit me because it's amazing. And it's a knockoff of Mexican and it's awesome. Um, shout out. I should, um, yeah, anyway. Yeah, keep going. But this is the place where I made my decision last summer to stop wearing my hair. And it was so unnerving. It was, um, just trying to think how to explain it. Like, because obviously, as you can see, there's been a pattern. Like, I'm constantly like, what can I do to try to build up my courage to, you know, not only be involved here, but also be okay with being involved out there. Not that I'm completely am fine with it, but just be okay with it. And um, it was, I don't know if you've had, ever been in a Nashville for a summer, but it is miserably hot, and there is, it's like so incredibly humid, you can't breathe, and with vacuum fitted hair pieces, you all know, when you start to sweat, it starts to slide, and you're constantly going like this. So I was working at this restaurant, and we have a patio, so I was running back and forth, and it was sliding, and I was like, this is miserable, absolutely miserable. It's hot, and I don't know, I just started thinking. Okay, there's tons of people here. Awareness. Hmm. Every table I go up to, if I was bald, they could ask me, I could tell them, what's going on? <laughs> this is a good way to make awareness. Okay, I can do that. All right. Also, lots of music industry people come in there. Hmm. Good way to stick out. <laughs> because it was really, really hard in the music industry in Nashville because everybody's there for it. It's like, hmm, yeah. People want to see the tattoo. Is it no? Music industry? Well, I will know you forever. 
perfect. <laughs> so I ended up con like, again, with the just communication is key here. Like, I just sent an email out. I talked to my manager at the restaurant, sent an email out, and was like, I am gonna stop wearing my hair. I am miserable. And would, can, do, would you, you care if I did this? And of course they didn't. And so I sent out an email, an email and let everybody know. And when I, sh I just, <laughs> I went home, I don't know what I was doing, but I went home and got changed to go to work. And I remember just looking at myself and just running out because I knew I would change my mind if I didn't just do it. <laughs> and so I ran out without my hair, went to talk to Mama Sia to work, and I only had one girl that didn't read the email, of course, that asked me, what'd you do to your hair? And I was like, <laughs> That was all it was. One girl asked me, and that's the worst that can happen. That was awesome. And then I had probably like a million customers since then ask me. Complete awareness. Now if they see anybody else, and they're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go out talk about scene with that. Um, <laughs> but this is kind of a funny picture. I wanted to wait to put this slide up. And <laughs> this year at um, we had Cinco de Mayo at Taco, and we had fake mustaches. <laughs> that day, put it back on the back of my head, and somehow my sunglasses stayed on the back of my head like that, and I wore it all day. I probably had 10 people, 10 dudes, ask me to take a picture with them. <laughs> Which was pretty awesome. <laughs> and then I told them, obviously, what was going on. And you know what, about every 5 to 10 people that have asked me have heard of it. Or they knew somebody, like, oh yeah, I'm with that. Or I even met, I met somebody that said they knew the lady that started this foundation, and I lost her contact info. Um, and I also met, who else did I meet? I don't know, I'm constantly meeting new people, which is amazing, and I love it. Um, let's see, where am I? So, anyway, I got to, I got a job in the music industry, hooray. So, <laughs> I was interning all through college, and I interned at this place, and um, at Broken Bow Records, and I got hired in January there, and they had known before, like when I started interning there, I had left the owner see me without my hair. I just, I wanted to make conversation with this person, because he's very, um, I mean, he's the owner. He chooses the songs, he makes the artist, one of the big artists is Jason Aldean. So I wanted him to know me, and he is absolutely in love with me now because I was very honest with him. He is, he is very in tune with honest people, and so I told him about this. And I would still wear my hair during the internship, but now that I work there, so, like for a week I'll go and I'll wear my hair, and then I'll wear red one day. And he'll say, Reba. <laughs> when he walks in the door. Or if I'm wearing blonde the next day, Carrie Underwood, what are you doing here? Like, he's so fun with it. Um, and it's just been a blessing. So I was like, okay, what can I do? I love music, and I miss singing because I just work now in the industry, and um, I want to. I have this huge passion for alopecia, areola, and everything else to do. That's all of it. Um, so I started these music with the main events this year, and I had the first one was just awareness, um, didn't raise any money, but the second one's this one here, the big Beckham's poster. That's with um, some huge songwriters, guys. I mean, we're talking Tim McGraw, Garth Brooks songs here that they wrote with him. And um, it was through my connections with music and just, like from working at my job, this guy, I just sent out an email. I was like, would well, any of you be willing to help me put together an event? And this, the publisher of our company was like, let me help you. So he helped me set up these writers. And the girl with blonde hair is Lindsay L. She's one of our new artists. She's from Canada, actually. And um, she'll be recording this year. but. Um, that was an amazing event, and then the picture of me singing was June. I had an event at a, it's called 12 and Quarter, and I actually coordinated seven other bands besides myself, and filled out this venue, and it was like two stages, so a stage over here, a stage over here, music going on at the same time, which was awesome. And a girl there had alopecia, um, which is why I was able to get the venue for free. And um, I actually met, through doing this, and I've tweeted about the event, and I got in contact with the lady at WSM Radio in Nashville, which is amazing, 
and her daughter's 11 and has alopecia. And I'm so excited about these Barbies out here because I'm totally giving her that Barbie. I'm so excited she's been able to come this year. But um, that's what I'm doing now. And I want to make it huge because I'm going to use music to make awareness. The more people that know about it, the more money will filter in, and the sooner our hair will all be back. And I can't wait just for family reunions instead. <laughs> Sessions. <laughs> so, my bravery to go without hair has taken my whole life to reach. And only good things have happened because of it. And I understand it's, this might not be a goal of everyone. I'm not trying to convince anyone one way or another at all. I'm just sharing my experiences and hoping to inspire you by what I've learned. Um, confidence. Believe in who you are and others will believe you too. Be yourself, you're bald, embrace it, do as much as you can to make a difference for the future. We all, if we all pull together, the more awareness we create, the more funding we'll get, the sooner we will have a cure. So don't know until you try. I no longer need to wear my hair, I wear it if I want to. I didn't have some incredible with me this past year, nor do I have the answers for everyone with alopecia, but what I do have is peace of mind. And I wanted to share that with anyone who's looking for it. We all come to a fork in the road at some point in our lives. Mine had to do with alopecia. And what I've chosen isn't to be bald or to have hair. It's to do both. And having the option is just so much better. It's so much more freeing than limiting myself one way or the other. I've turned my burden into a blessing. And by being great enough to be there. Um, I just recorded a little EP and I wrote a song called Great Enough to Be There. It's on here. I have a few along. Um, Five dollars. I'm just charging just so we can donate that money to NAF. Um, I just have a few, and then I have some cards if you guys want. Them. But I would like to sing my ribbon through their song, I guess. Thank you. 
Are you ready?